Welcome to this edition of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. Uh, in this episode, we're going to do a bit of an unboxing because I found something pretty cool. It's actually these guys right here. So, landing gear for the Spark. How cool is that? Now, I'm going to talk about a couple things, but let's take it out of the box. Um, it came in a packing envelope, so the box is kind of squished. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Uh, installation drawing, and I guess I got the gray ones. I really didn't see a color choice when I purchased these off Amazon, and I'll have the link below. These were about uh, 10 bucks, so I guess you could say $5 per strut, which they're making out pretty good because these are just molded plastic. I've, uh, I'm also wondering about 3D printing these because the biggest thing, as you can tell, is their turn. So uh, I believe there's going to be a, a left and a right one, as you can see, because of the way that they're formed. Um, but before we, we attempt to put them on the copter, let's uh, put them on the scale and see what they weigh. And I need to let this zero out. Let's move this guy over here. Let's move this scale. So they weigh about nine grams. Now, probably what I would do or will do is, is use these without the prop guards. So there won't be much of a weight difference because one of the reasons I use the prop guards too, well, it depends where I fly, but it also it keeps it clear because these are so low and it sits down in the grass. Because the other thing I wanted to mention is with these because I also wonder if it'll fit on there with the prop guards on um, you know looking at this because you can kind of see here the prop guards take up a lot of space um, but one of the issues I've been having is when this sits on something number one you notice this gimbal let me see if I can get this down here if if uh, anything presses on this gimbal or kind of touches it it gives a gimbal overload error um, which is a bit problematic and when it sits on like grass or something that's a, kind of a soft surface I get it here um, is a problem. The other thing I've had problems with is this sitting on something and having a compass calibration error so uh, getting it up is, is actually pretty good but I want to turn this around or turn this upside down and, and see because now one the picture shows this without prop guards and with the prop guards on, I don't see where it is possible to actually uh, put these on. So I'm going to pop the prop guards off, which they come off rather quick. And I love the prop guard design on these, by the way. It would be kind of cool if they uh, did a version that uh, worked with the prop guards. And uh, I may actually do a, a mix-up uh, of this of my own on 3D on the 3D printer because, again, what happens is these just and it's uh, I guess it's probably good that it's a tight fit. And I'm trying to work around not to break these. Now the gray seems to match the um, the spark, so you see I have one on. They pop on rather easy. I guess maybe uh, I jinxed myself saying they pop on rather easy. No, not too bad. All right, so they fit pretty snug. And uh, is this one on here? No, that one I wasn't on there all the way. Got to make sure they pop up and they're all. Okay, now we're good. Now we're good to go. So this is what it looks like uh, with that. And now it sits up. Um, this is actually pretty cool. I like this quite a bit. Um, it would be nice if it did. All these also did work with the prop guards too, but uh, won't fit with the prop guards. But it does now sit up. You can kind of see the clearance if I take this box and I hold it up here now. So you could launch from grass or other surfaces, I think, pretty easy with this. Um, I do like the prop guards for some flying situations, so I'm kind of a little bit disappointed that this won't work with the prop guard also. Um, but again, like I say, I may actually take a version of this and mix it up and 3D print my own. Uh, now these are injected plastic. I don't know uh, what type of plastic. They do seem rather sturdy and they do seem to be on here rather tight. And the clips, I want to get it in the top here, do have a positive connection because the, the arm itself you can see is tapered. I'm not sure you can probably see that, but it's tapered and so it fits around that and clips right into place and then clips over the top. 
So, I mean, these really aren't going to come off. And at 9 grams, if they do, it's not going to be, I think, a huge problem. Um, but anyways, I find that pretty interesting. I'm definitely going to give them a try in some flights. Um, because I've been looking for a way to kind of get the copter up. Um, you'll see in some coming videos where I actually have some issues with this. Um, because I'm going to put this video out rather quick, probably out of order with some of the other ones. And you'll see where I'm using this new helipad. And uh, it's pressing against the bottom, giving both compass errors and gimbal overload errors. Because it's um, resting on top of grass and then I'm putting the copter on. This will solve that problem. So I like this a lot. <clears throat> so anyways, I'll have the link for this. It'll be in one of the cards too. It'll also be down below. So if you want to uh, check this out, if you have a spark for 10 bucks, I would highly recommend this. So anyways, um, <clears throat> excuse me, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe button coming up over there. And hey, we'll see you guys in the next video because this is cool.